Good evening and welcome to TL Physics and today I'm going to talk about equipotential lines in gravitational fields. Now potential is uh, the idea that a region of space that objects have the same potential. Now this is the energy that is either given to the object by the field to leave the field to infinity or the amount of energy that you need to add to remove this from uh, remove this object and bring it to infinity. Now, just a reminder, the equation for potential in gravitational fields is the energy over the mass, okay? Or minus gm over r. And the reason this is a minus sign is because gravitational fields are attractive, which means that to get anything out to infinity, where the potential is zero. So at infinity, potential is zero. I need to actually put energy in. Now, when you actually have a mass, you can actually draw these things called equipotential lines. Now, equipotential lines are areas which have the same potential. So it doesn't matter which object is there. It could be a 100 kilogram mass, it could be a two kilogram mass. At this line, they have the same potential, but they would have different potential energies, okay? So this here, my center of mass is a little bit off, as is my diagram, so we're just gonna clean this up a little bit. My object is in the center here, okay? And it has got field lines that look like this. Okay, so these are the field lines. And they represent the strength and the direction the object will be moved into. So these, of course, represent the direction, the test object moves, and field strength. Because the closer they are together, the stronger the field. So the field is much stronger near the center of the mass. Now these lines here that I've drawn around, these are equipotential lines. These are regions where you have the same potential. And as you can see, they're at right angles to the field lines. So these equipotential lines are perpendicular to your field lines. And what it means is that an object on those equipotential lines, they do not require any energy to move it from one point to another. So, or any change in potential. So this object here, if I had an object here, okay, and an object here, if I was gonna move this to the same place in the field, that requires no change in potential energy. But if I was going to move it from this position to here, so I'm going to call this A, I'm going to call this B, and I'm going to call this C, I am changing to a different potential line, which means I must have an energy change. I must add some potential energy. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to do this calculation on the board. Now, what I want you to make aware of is, can you see here, this potential here, is minus 10 and this potential here is minus 2. What this value is telling me here is that minus 10 joules per kilo, if I was going to try and remove an object that weighed 1 kilo and I was going to remove it from this equipotential line to infinity, I would need to put in 10 joules. Here, which is further away from the mass, I only need to put in 2 joules to remove this object from in, to infinity. So what we're going to do, if I am moving, so let's 
put this information up here. If I'm going from A to B, there is no change in potential. Therefore, no change in gravitational potential energy. Okay. Now, if I was going from A to C, there is a change in potential. So there is a change in GPE. And we can, of course, calculate that by using this formula here, that the change in potential equals the change in energy over the mass of the object. So let's say this object is one kilogram. My change in potential is going from minus 10 to minus 2. So my change in potential is 8. Okay. And that equals my change in energy over my mass, which is 1 kilogram. So my change in GPE is 8 times 1, which equals 8 joules. So as you can see, my 1 kilogram mass here, if I was going to move it from A to C, would require me to add 8 joules of energy into this. And you can see this by this. Is, this one here is 10 minus 10 joules per kilo. This is minus 2 joules per kilo. But to just move it within the field, I will need to add 8 joules in total. So it's really important you understand how to read equipotential lines. My advice, draw all over them. Write on them. If you're going to draw patterns and how they move, do that. Okay. But equipotential lines are always perpendicular to the field lines. And um, just be aware of the values of them, because if you're moving from one to another, you can actually use the, the formula here of change in potential is change in energy over mass to work out the actual energy, the change in GPE, gravitational potential energy, that you need to move an object. Okay? And that is equipotential lines.